Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So we're down here in the uh, like the lower compartment of this lathe that I'm rebuilding. And done a couple 3D prints on this guy already. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, we did this piece here to calibrate the uh, the bearings in the, uh, the headstock for the spindle on this lathe. So if you're interested in that, haven't seen it, check that out. Um, but today, I just reinstalled the motor in this lathe. Um, I cleaned it all up. I uh, primed it, painted it, got it back into the cabinet along with all of the drive componentry uh, in here that has also been uh, all cleaned up and reinstalled. This has a variable speed uh, set up on it. This piece here uh, forces this part of the pulley uh, inward, causing the belt to ride up further on the pulley. Uh, the tension remains the same by this pulley up here getting larger. Uh, that spring moves over and you can adjust the speed of this. Uh, this motor also had a brake on it originally, and I took it off uh, before I primed and painted this guy. Um, and it's, it's actually, it's missing the electromagnet in it. I think otherwise it's complete, but I really don't need it. I'm gonna be using a VFD on this machine. So there was no reason to try and keep the brake on here. So I took it off, and that leaves us with kind of a problem. Here, this, this guy stuck way out. It was sticking all the way out to like here. So we're in better shape with the brake off, but take a look at this. You know what's gonna happen if I leave that there. In fact, I've already walked into it and yet yeah, it hurt. It's also fairly sharp because it is a shaft with a keyway and a key in it. Now I could pull the key off, I guess. Um, it's not gonna do us that much good because then we're gonna have the sharp edge where the keyway is. And also, when this guy is actually under power and turning, it's kind of dangerous having this, uh, this end of the, uh, the shaft here on the motor uh, just sticking out. Because, of course, this is, this is good turning with the motor. Uh, this, the, uh, the brake caddy piece, um, uh, drum that keyed onto here, and then a brake band uh, that pulled against that drum uh, to slow it down. And it was bolted onto this face here, this... Um, uh, this end cap, which probably also holds the bearing for this motor as well. So I'd like to come up with a piece that covers this uh, that kind of roughly matches the overall aesthetic of the motor and the era that this machine came from. So I'll probably do mostly rounded corners. I want it to be very strong because I don't want to worry about walking into this guy while it's running and have the print brake or get pushed into the shaft and potentially still have a problem. I mean, if your pant leg hit this while this was turning, um, you know, your jeans could get uh, caught up in here and it could cause quite a problem. I think this is a, it's at least a three quarter horsepower motor, but even if the power rating isn't super high, um, there's a ton of energy stored in just the weight of the, uh, the rotor spinning in this thing. It is really, really heavy. This was a bear to get in and out. Believe it or not, that motor, and it's, it's big. I mean, there's my hand for scale. It's a good sized motor, but uh, it weighs like 100 pounds. There's the tag on it. It's a, this lathe is from 1976, I think, so this is pretty old. Um, it's funny, this, uh, I think it's three quarter horsepower, if I'm not mistaken. And any motor that's this size that I've seen today is rated at least three horsepower. So I don't know if, uh, you know, the rating is just different or if the castings and everything on the sky are just way overbuilt, but it's a beast. So there is a, what I'm getting at is there's a ton of stored energy in there once the sky is spinning. So we want to make sure whatever we build on here is going to be plenty strong. So let me get some measurements here and uh, we'll see what we can uh, draw up.
All right, and here is the design that I came up with. And everything about this is thick and strong. So I'll usually only do about like three millimeters for the wall of uh, something structural like this, uh, where the thickness of this plate, usually that's plenty strong. I went a full uh, half a centimeter or five millimeters for all of, uh, all of these surfaces here. So the ring that goes around um, that plate at the end, uh, the thickness of this plate, this piece here, and you can see that depth here in those bolt holes. Um, and even thicker for this feature here. The, the shaft is nowhere near this diameter. Um, but I kept this, this, this feature here uh, quite large just you know, to give it added strength. You can see the inside section uh, to clear that shaft is significantly smaller. I also beveled um, everything that I could. There's no bevel here because there's really no bevel on that plate that we're bolting up onto. But I beveled this. Uh, I curved this surface here, this surface here, and then almost a bull nose um, out here. Uh, number one, so that we don't have uh, a hard edge to walk into. Um, uh, number two, it's you know aesthetically pleasing. I think matches sort of the uh, the design era that this thing was built in, um, but also gives it tremendous strength. We don't have um, any points for the print to to crack apart. Everything where. Everything where strength is going to be important in this guy is uh, is beveled and curved, so this guy should hold up to a lot of abuse. All right, let's uh, let's print it and find out. All right, and there we go. And uh, I removed the uh, the support material here off camera. Uh, that actually, it came off pretty easy. Um, this is the second one I printed. Uh, the first one, in addition to being just a, a bit too short for the uh, the shaft, I lengthened uh, this section here just a little bit. Um, the first one, I had the the bolt holes here. Um, I figured I could just reuse the bolts that were used to, uh, to hold the brake onto here. Uh, I thought these three bolt holes were evenly spaced. Uh, it turns out they're not which I guess makes sense. They probably have these spaced in a fashion to make it impossible to bolt the brake on in the wrong orientation. Uh, but when I designed this, I just used the, uh, the uh, polygon tool uh, to get the, uh, the bolt circle here. And the, essentially the bolt circle, uh, the, uh, the diameter that the holes are centered on is good, but the spacing is not even. So I had to print another one um, with the uneven spacing that matches up with this, and it's also a bit longer. So, pop this guy on. Yeah, they line up. Let me get you guys out of the tripod. There you go. You can see we are now lined up on all three of those holes, and I'm pretty happy with the appearance of this as well. But let's get the bolts in. Um, to, to figure out the spacing for this, by the way, I just I put a sheet of paper up against it, um, basically got a rubbing of it, um, and then measured the distance between the holes. Since I know what bolt circle they're on, and I was accurate with that, all I needed to know was the distance between the two holes, and I can just take a line and follow the, the circle starting at one point until I hit that length on the other hole. And they're pretty close. I mean, you know, I took measurements from a rubbing, so it's not perfect. But they are uh, they're pretty close. They'll work. All right, let's. Uh, we should be able to reuse these bolts. But actually, let me clean these guys up. They're all uh, they're all covered in grease and uh, uh, dust from the uh, the brake. All right, got these cleaned up. Um, but I think we're gonna have a problem here. The, uh, the threads look boogered up on these guys. Uh, the, these are the bolts that, that held the brake in place and the brake was kind of rusted on there. And I used uh, the bolts actually as sort of jacks uh, to press this off the, the shaft. So I have a feeling in addition to the threads being a little bit messed up here, I think the threads might be a little bit messed up um, here as well. Let's see. Yeah. So I think we're probably going to have to chase, oh, actually that one's going in. Yeah, those two don't. This guy down here does. Uh, so that one's good. But these two we're going to have to probably chase the threads. Let's see if the bolt 
goes in from the bottom. No. Uh, yeah, kind of there. So I think we're going to have to chase uh, the threads in these holes as well as chase the threads on, uh, on these bolts. All right, we got to first figure out what these threads even are. Uh, this lathe was made in England, uh, but it was made for the U.S. market. So it could be metric, could be imperial, who knows. Most of the lathe is actually imperial, even though England would have been metric at the time that this was made. Uh, but the motor was made by a different company. Um, so, yeah, all, all bets are off. Uh, we're just going to have to measure it. So this is a metric thread gauge. Let's start there. All right, I put a sheet of paper here and angled you guys down so that hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, so I am lining up the uh, the thread gauge on the threads of this, uh, this short bolt. And this is a 1.5 millimeter. So if it was metric, there's a good chance it'd be this one. But it is not. And I'm pretty sure this is probably not metric because this one's kind of close. If you notice, it lines up there for the first, the first couple of teeth on the left, but then gets out of sync. Uh, so if this was metric, um, it wouldn't be that close. We'd be further off unless it was some really oddball thread, which, you know, it's fairly uncommon. Let's check the imperial one. Let's see which side do we want to be on. Two course. There we go. Let's try 18 TPI. TPI being threads per inch. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what it should look like when you've got the right one. You see how all of them mesh in there? So then as I go up and then come back down, they all come in and out of mesh. So it is 18 threads per inch, so we can go now to our, our thread dies and just look for what is close that is 18 TPI. We could also measure the diameter of this as well, but you can usually eyeball it uh, pretty easy. All right, looks like it is 5 16 18, so I've got the appropriate tap and die. So uh, let's get set up and chase these threads. All right, so it looks like it was all in our bolts. Um, if you saw, I didn't even need to use the uh, the tool there uh, to to turn the the uh, the tap for for this. So looks like this is a harder material than what the bolts were, and all the wear was in the uh, in the bolts, which is you know how it should be. So all right, let me grab those uh, let me grab those bolts, and we'll get this in place. So oh, I just realized these bolts actually have UNC uh, right on the head, which means national course. Uh, so we should have known right from the bat that these were imperial uh, threaded bolts uh, and not metric, but oh well. Now, I'm not reusing the washers for this. Uh, I'm not planning on ever removing this cap, so I'm just going to tighten these bolts until they just start to dig into our, our plastic. This is PLA, by the way. Um, I thought about printing this in TPU, but the supports just would have been a pain in the butt. But TPU would have been indestructible and probably would have actually even given a little bit if you walked into it. But PLA, I'll be fine. Okay, so these are just starting to dig in a little bit, which is what I want because it's going to act as sort of a... Uh, you know, sort of a thread locker on these. These are not going to want to back out even under vibration. Oh boy, that looks good. Let's, uh, let me get you backed up. Oh yeah, that looks worlds better. I would say that matches pretty well with the, uh, the overall character of the, uh, of the lathe and the motor as well. We've got those nice rounded uh, edges and this one's specifically a nice big round edge so that when I walk into this guy, and I inevitably will, um, it's not going to dig into my leg. So, very happy with that. 
This guy is uh, this guy's really coming along. Hopefully not more than another couple of weeks till I have this lathe functional. So, all right guys, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop. As always, uh, if this is your first time here, I do a new video like this every single week, every Friday, uh, fixing something, improving something, or designing something new from scratch with, uh, with 3D printing. So if you're into that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button. And if you do, I'll see you back here next Friday.